or Regus, whereby con Raymond Tulicos to keep looking for the multiple trophies we need, including all the rares we still haven't gotten, and also all the diamonds we are yet to get with the recurve. You know, in the last couple of weeks, I've been focusing on getting closer to achieve my goal of getting every single diamond in the game with the recurve bow, and while I've managed to obtain most of those species, there are still a few remaining. So in order to hopefully get one of those trophies, today we're out here on single player, where I just came across the track of a potential level 3 hazel grouse, which is actually quite intriguing because the hazel grouse is one of the diamond species I'm yet to get with the recurve, and having the chance to find the max level here on my own map is certainly one of the things I really wanted. So we definitely gotta go find this guy, since he may be a level 3 and a diamond. Now, by the way, we found this track right on this location, which as you can see is really close to the border of the map, and it's actually one of the areas that I rarely ever check. I mean, whenever I come to this region, I normally check this area, maybe down here, but it's really rare to see me moving next to its border, which surprisingly seems to be a decent spot, I mean, there are many copper galleys here, many grouses, I've seen some moose and white as well. You know, nothing crazy, but I would say it's a spot worth checking more often. Alright, that may be him. Unfortunately, I lost the track, so hearing this call is a bit relieving. Let's see, there he comes. Level 2. Up to 435, he's definitely the max estimate. Although he doesn't seem to be a huge max estimate. I mean, he would have to score exactly at the top of the estimate, which is 435, to have a chance to be a diamond, because the diamond score is 435. Let's pretend that didn't happen, and we got him. Now, I still wonder how big it is, even though it's pretty much impossible for him to make it. But before I shoot, whatever is coming up there is also a hazel grouse, a female this time. Just a brown common plumage. And now let's actually see how big is this guy, although there's a copper Kaylee coming in. And she won't go anywhere. Let's see. 421.42, he is really far from being huge, but regardless, I gotta say that the hazel grouse is one of my favorite species in the game, mainly because of how they look, I think they look amazing, you know, they may not have the most striking colors, but I love the model. And I also love that they have multiple plumage variations, like for example, the grey, the brown, the dark, and of course the rare variations, which are also amazing and incredibly rare. In fact, I still haven't gotten any, so I'll definitely keep hunting these guys and paying attention to all the tracks to see if we can find some other max estimates. Alright, we're still on single player, now exploring this location, which as you can see is on the opposite border, and on this occasion, I just stumbled onto another really intriguing track. Surprisingly, I came across another max estimate hazel grouse track. This was really unexpected because the max estimate hazel grouse is one of the rarest max estimates in the game, so finding two in the span of an hour is quite lucky, I would say. Hopefully, this one is bigger than the last one and we can finally get that diamond off the list with the recurve. Now, talking about the new weapon that will come with the new Emerald Coast DLC, as you probably already know, it will be a 22-250 bolt action rifle, which is a weapon that is meant to be used to hunt the small game species. And one of the questions I have about this rifle is exactly which classes will it cover? You know, we know that this caliber is meant to be a direct competition of the 223, and we know that the 223 in game is absolute trash, I mean, it lacks penetration, and it also doesn't cover a single class that the 243 doesn't. So I think that in order for the 22-250 to be rifle worth carrying, it must provide an advantage over both the 223 and the 243, and that advantage, in my opinion, has to be having the option to use it against class 1 animals. You know, being able to hunt all those class 1 species with it would really give us a reason to choose it over the 243, and if they also make it a reliable weapon to hunt class 2 and class 3 species, it could become a rifle that is worth having in our inventory. So I think it should definitely be a class 1 to 3 weapon, because if they make it like class 2 to 4 or class 2 to 5, it will quickly become one of the neglected weapons because it doesn't have the power to compete against the 243. 
also another advantage of making it class 1 to 3 is that we'll have the possibility of honing every single species in the game with only two rifles. Like if we equip it along with the 7mm we would be covering all the species up to class 9, saving a great amount of space on our inventories. Ok, I hate to say it, but this guy is not leaving more tracks. You know I've been running around trying to find the next one, but he's simply not there, so... Let's see if we can still find them, it's certainly gonna be a lot more complicated. Alright, I just got a call coming from that direction, from a male hazel grouse. And I imagine there's a chance it's the big one, although this area has many grouses, so you cannot be sure. It could perfectly be a different one. And there he is again. He's probably about to take off, so let's get ready. Let's see, he's flying now. Although I can barely see him. We gotta attempt a shot still. I didn't hit him though. He's gone. Oh, he's coming back. Is he a level 3? Level 2, top estimate of 441. You know he had a bigger estimate than the last one, but I really doubt he'll be big enough to be a diamond. Still, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of a surprise, so let's see how big it is. 420.67, he's in fact slightly smaller than the last one, and the tracking distance was not too bad considering that he wasn't leaving any tracks. It actually could have taken way more time to find it. Level 3 Whitetail. He has a top estimate of 290 and what seems to be the medium sized diamond rack. You know, there's absolutely no way he trolls, he's a guaranteed diamond. And it's actually been several months, if not more than a year, since the last time I got a diamond whitetail with a recurve. So on this occasion, even though I've done it several times in the past, I wanna drop this guy using the recurve foe, because eventually I wanna do a big monage featuring all the species caught in with the recurve, and of course I'ma show a white tail, but I plan to show a recent kill, so we're gonna take the chance here and I'ma use the recurve this time. Alright. Let's see. He's about 60 meters out. So I guess we'll have to use a collar, because I don't think any of the bushes down there will give us full cover. Maybe that one, but I doubt it. And honestly, having some elevation here, I don't see any reason to go down there, so we're gonna use a collar here. Okay, they are coming in. Pretty much 40 meters out, already inside the ideal range. We just gotta wait for a broadside angle. Now, some of you have asked me what is my favorite animal of all the species that will be included on Emerald Coast, and honestly that is a very good question, because frankly I'm not really sure if I like one more than the others. I mean, hunting bantings should be amazing, hunting crocodiles should be amazing, of course hunting kangaroos should be a very unique experience, and even shooting stubble quail could have the potential to be a blast. Without even counting the new deer species, so it's really hard to choose only one, although... Honing bantings with the 470 sounds a bit more exciting than the other options to be honest. So I would say bantings. Ok, now this guy is perfectly broadside and pretty much 30 meters out, giving us the option to drop him right here. Well, we know it is a guaranteed diamond, so the question is exactly how big of a diamond. 265.13 is decent. You know, the weight is not too high, but the score is pretty decent, and I believe this is my first diamond whitetail since they got a new model. I really like how they look, now they look like an actual whitetail, and it's certainly great to see that the fallow deer is getting a similar treatment. They are also gonna look amazing.
now. I'm 99% sure that that is a leucistic Eurasian teal. A leucistic female. Here we can clearly see the difference in comparison with these other common females. It's very clear that this one is significantly lighter in color. So as soon as I saw it there on the water, I knew it was something special. You know, she will be our first ever leucistic Eurasian teal, and of course I would have rather get in a male, but a female is also fantastic. So anyway, now let's go harvest this beautiful rare. Another difference that the leucistic females have compared to the common ones is that instead of having green feathers on the wings, they have blue feathers. It's a small detail, that's for sure, but it really adds to the uniqueness of this plumage. And here we have it, my first ever leucistic Eurasian teal. A very cool looking rare. 